Hi everyone, so I did my best books of 2016 video, um, if you haven't checked it out, there's a link down below, and now I'm doing a worst books of 2016 video, which I hope isn't going to ruffle any feathers, but if it does, um, <laughs> let's just get on with it. So the first book that I gave, uh, none of these are one star books. I guess I'm a huge softy and I'm a lot nicer than I thought, but I've given no book one star in 2016. None of them. The worst of the worst get two stars. I kind of changed it this year. There should have been one of my resolutions that if I really dislike a book, I should just give it one star and be done with it. But anyways, uh, back to the worst books of 2016. First one is Terms of Use. And this is a random book that I got on Amazon through Amazon Prime. I'm a little lost as to like having the Prime membership and getting free books from Amazon works. So I kind of did that for a couple of months, but the books weren't the best and I had a lot more exciting books that I wanted to read elsewhere from like the library or the ones that I already had. So I sort of put it on the back burner and haven't been back to it. I'll have to check it out again. I hear some people really enjoyed the lending library there. I don't know if that's a thing, but maybe I'll have to check it out. Anyways, I got this book from um, Amazon. It was okay. The story was very, like, predictable and it didn't blow my socks off. So it was very, an, an average read. I would not recommend it to anybody, but it wouldn't be the worst thing to ever happen to you if you did read it. So two stars seems like a reasonable uh, evaluation of this book. The next book is called Shatter Me and it's a part of the series, the first book in a series and I've seen it around booktube a lot and people were saying how amazing it was. You know, I just think I was the wrong person for this book because, I don't know, I am... Um, from what I remember since I read this book last spring, I think there was a bunch of stuff crossed out all throughout the book and that just like drove me a little bit nuts because I just, I can't take that. If something weird's going on in the t in the paragraphs, in the text, there's only so much of it I can take. So this one really didn't work out very well for me, but, you know, I'm glad that some people it did something for other people that they really enjoyed the series. Um, unfortunately, if you don't like things being crossed out constantly, just funny stuff going on in, in the text, I wouldn't recommend this book. So this one also got two stars. Next one should come as no surprise. I actually have a video for this one as well that I'll link down below, and this is... Fifty Shades of Grey, which is the first book in the series, and I've heard so much about this book before I picked it up that I decided finally, what kind of um, you know reader would I be if I didn't at least give it a chance? Having heard so much overwhelming amount of information about this book, most of which was that how poorly it was written, I probably should have listened to that. But anyways, I went picked it up. It wasn't a horrible book, you know. If you're looking for a light, fluffy read and you don't have problems with like somewhat abusive relationships, then sure, it's a great fluffy read, like, I don't know, like one of those romance novels that you read and then throw away, that's kind of what this is. But that's how I felt about it, it was just so poorly written, never read a cheesier book in my life, I don't think. So overall, like, I wasn't very interested in it, I didn't like their relationship, and I think that's the biggest problem for me, like, I wasn't buying into their relationship, and that's why I just wasn't compelled to read more. But if I was buying into it, I'd probably read all those books and watch all the movies, so no judgments here. The next one I expected to be better, and it's called Fates and Furies. I've heard a few good things about it before I picked it up, so I thought, okay, this book is kind of promising, it's written from um, a wife's and a husband's perspective, so like one chapter is the wife, the next is the husband. I love that kind of writing. I like multiple perspectives, so I thought, okay, that seems like something that I'll probably be interested in. In the end, both characters were so boring, I didn't care for them, didn't care for their drama, didn't care for their personal problems, they were just so bland. So, and I think the biggest thing is when I don't care about a character and their problems, I'm not gonna care very much about the book, so this one also gets two stars. The next one, I feel like it was this pretty overhyped book, and this is Sweet Bitter, and now that I think about it, I feel like more people talked negatively about it than positively about it, so I probably should have expected this, but this one is about a young woman who moves to New York City to pursue, I don't even know what, because she becomes a waitress, and without really aspirations for anything else, and she, by the sounds of it, really struggles, and then she gets mixed up with her co-workers at her restaurant who are very troublesome. She gets involved in, like, an abusive relationship. Anyways, 
the main character wasn't very interesting and she just seemed like, I don't know, I don't know what she wanted out of life. And her co-workers just seemed like a huge mess. So overall this book did not go over well with me, so I gave it two stars and I don't recommend anyone pick it up. The final worst book of 2016 was another overhyped book, I think. It's called The Nest and I've heard a lot about it, I've seen it everywhere. I, so many people shared the picture of that book that, I don't know, I think the reason why I picked it up is because I've seen it like everywhere, so I felt like, okay, I have to read it. And this one was about a family, um, there's like four, si five siblings, they're all in their like 30s and 40s. Um, their parents left them the nest, so like a bunch of money that they're going to share amongst each other when they all turn however old. So they turn however old and they're ready for th to collect their nest and they've all like done nothing with their lives because they've been relying on that nest. And then one of their siblings, you know, the dark sheep in the family, does something stupid so that the nest is gone and none of them have any money. And then, I couldn't even tell you how the book ends, like something, he does something shady, disappears, and they're all sort of trying to figure out what to do with their life. The one thing I did like about this book, so it wasn't all bad, was the fact that each one of them um, had their own little side story, like there was something about their past that you kind of, was somewhat interesting, but overall, I struggled to finish this book. I wouldn't recommend you read it unless it sounds like an appealing book. So here you have it, um, books that did not do very well for me in 2016. Please let me know if you read any of these books and please let me know if you agree or disagree about them being good or bad. Also please let me know what have been your terrible books of 2016 so I make sure to avoid those. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.